Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I just wanted to jump on here and share some thoughts, uh, just some things that I've been processing with the Lord I want to kind of invite you guys into. Uh, what I'm going to share, I believe, is, is something corporate. I believe it's, uh, it's, it's weighty. I believe it's heavy. I believe it's uh, what the Lord is really saying right now on the earth. Sometimes these heavy, weighty words are the ones that we, we, we want to run from. They're the ones that we don't want to share. They're the things that are a bit more uncomfortable, gets people uh, taking sides and stuff like that. I hope this doesn't do that. hope this resonates with your spirit. I hope it's something that gives you hope. Um, if you're someone like Christy and I who is called to, uh, to see nations, you know, we're all called to disciple nations. I believe that's a core a core value of the kingdom where we're called to disciple nations, you know, and discipling nations isn't just like equipping people in your Sunday service. This is talking about we have the responsibility as sons and daughters of God to to um, to basically steward cities, steward, steward whole, you know, regions, nations and everything like that. And in that, there is this call to be watchmen. In that, there is a call to almost like saying, you know, what goes on in this place? You know, I'm protective over it. I'm like a midwife over my region or over my city or over my nation. There's something in me that is just like, I, I can't allow evil and injustice to go unchecked. It's like there is a core value, right? There is a core value that I have that I can't just sit in my little bubble, my little Christian goldfish bubble, my little silo and go about my life and think that that's going to be kingdom. And so I believe in this hour that God's been really been stirring up and, and stirring up this whole new level of, of, of justice in the body of Christ. I think 2020, we saw that. Good to see you guys, by the way. Sorry, I'm getting pretty in- intense, but I wanted to share some thoughts with you guys. I, I believe the Lord gave me a very strong word this morning. I was in, in worship just like I'm doing now. And, and, and the Lord said something very clear to me. I'll share with what that is in a minute. But you know, like when it comes to our children, when it comes to seeing generations to come, you know, God wants us to begin to um, fight and stand up for the things that will that will impact and uh, the things that will really either cause our, our children to live in peace, live in revival or our children to live in chaos. And right now, God is stirring up the body of Christ to stand up and not hide in a moment of conflict. And this morning, as I was praying, actually, I'll quickly go back to one thing. At the beginning of the year, the Lord was speaking to me about this would be a year. This would be a year of justice. And I believe that we saw a lot of opposite of that. I do believe that in Je- in December, the Lord gave me a word about justice quakes, justice shakes going on in the nations. And I'm like, God, God, where are those things that you showed me? There, Where are those things that you showed me? The justice quakes, the justice shakes. Why does it seem like the earth seems to be, you know, constantly going in the other direction in so many areas of our values and stuff like that? And and the, the word that the Lord gave me was there is, there is justice has been delayed. And it reminded me of the story of Daniel where he was, you know, he prayed and the answer hadn't come. The answer hadn't come yet, you know. And then the angel of the Lord came to him and he said, actually, from the moment you've, wow, feel the anointing now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. From the moment you first started praying, God heard you. But then he said that he was intercepted by the prince of Persia, right? The prince of Persia came, this demonic principality and actually delayed the answer. I believe we've been in that place. Interestingly, the prince of Persia, the word Persia means division, divided tongue, divi- division. And I, I feel like the, the enemy has really stirred up division in the body of Christ so that it would further um, exacerbate this whole spiritual scenario that justice has been delayed. But this is the thing, and I shared this recently. There is a difference between um, the interruption of the enemy and the disruption of the Lord. And the enemy, enemy may interrupt and he may try to delay, but it does not stop the word of the Lord being fulfilled. Okay? It does not stop the word of the Lord being fulfilled. Now, what I want to share with you today is this. Yes, justice has been delayed, but I need to prophesy and I need to stand by this justice is coming. We're about to enter into a time where we see justice coming from the left and from the right. I need to prophesy this, that we're going to see restoration come in so many different places. It's going to shock you. It's going to shock us to see the level of justice that's going to break out in our lands. This morning I was in worship and I heard the Lord say this. He said, 
Nate, watch for the writing on the wall. He said, Nate, watch for the writing on the wall. And I quickly grabbed out my Bible. I looked up Daniel 5. And I need to quickly kind of recap this for you, okay? Daniel 5. Belshazzar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, okay, the guy who built the idol to him, you know, the statue to himself. Obviously, the God's people were in captivity still. Daniel was still serving in that kingdom under captivity. This is what it says, okay? Belshazzar made a great feast for a thousand of his lords, okay? And he drank wine in the presence of the thousand. He gave the command to get the gold and the silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem. The temple, God's God's temple. He took those very gold goblets and all that stuff. And it says this, and they they drank from them. They brought the gold vessels from the temple um, and they drank from them. They praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood and stone. Okay, so we're seeing yet this parallel between this story here and even even Psalm 2, where it says the nations rage. You know, it speaks about it speaks about the, the, the earth, the earth's kings, Lil K, defying the Lord and his values, wanting to remove God. Seeing, you know, that's exactly what the Antichrist spirit wants to do is remove God, wants to move the wants to remove the gospel from schools, wants to remove godly values from every part of our society. That's what that, that's what that thing does. That antichrist spirit, that, that anti-God spirit wants to remove. He wants, wants it to be okay that abortion is an, an option. He wants to make it okay that we, you know, that we do all these different things that work against the values of the kingdom. But this is what the Lord says. I want, I want to attend, draw your attention to the answer for a moment, okay? Because right now we're looking at all the different things that are passing right now. Even in my own heart, I've said, Lord, how come Roe v. Wade has not been overturned yet? God, how come there's all these demonic acts and different different bills that are being passed in the world? What is going on? And the Lord would keep, he's been continuing to say to me, justice has been delayed, but it is not thwarted. Okay, justice has been delayed, but it is not thwarted. In reminding me of this, the rest of Psalm 2, where God laughs, okay? The rest of the act, hasn't we haven't seen that play out yet. But I want to read to you what happens real quickly. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared, and it wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand. And we know the story that happened, right? He went white as a ghost. He went white as a ghost seeing these four words being written on the wall of the, the, where they're having their feast. And he got all of his, you know, all his witches and warlocks. And he said, you know, I need you to, to I need you to interpret this. But none of them could. And then a lady rem- remembered that there was a man called Daniel that had served his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, and brought him in. And this is what, da- this is what Daniel said. OK, very simple. I want to quickly read it to you because it's very interesting. It si- simply says this. The words were mene, mene, tekel, apasin. Which he said, the interpretation of each word, Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Mene again, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Man, I feel the anointing of God on this. I feel the justice of the Lord upon this. We're going to see the end of this demonic thing that has come against the kingdom of God. Come against you know, our children come against the institution of, of marriage and family and our, and they're unborn. We're about to see the end of it. Tekel, you've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Now, this is the thing you need to hear what happened. OK, then Belshazzar gave the command that gave Daniel all the stuff that very that that very night. Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. We don't know what happened there. That very night, Belshazzar was slain. He's a guy who defied the kingdom of God and his values, grabbed the sacred things of the temple and would choose to mock it. And it seems like in this season that this other kingdom is prospering. You think about you think about that, that guy, one of um, Asaph. You think about these guys that worshipped and they said, God, what's going on? How come it seems like the people that aren't serving you are doing better than us and we're struggling. We're going through warfare and so many are thinking like that right now. They're saying, God, what's going on? 
You spoke to me. You spoke to countless people. What is going on? This is not, this is not even about a political thing, arena right now. This is about kingdom. This is about the kingdom of God. You spoke, God. What is going on? Why does it feel like justice is delayed? And I believe the Lord is saying, watch for the writing on the wall. Watch for the writing of the wall. You know, when they have these different acts passed, like this equality one that, that they're trying to pass. I think of my girls. I think, what kind of world are they going to grow up in that is okay? That this stuff is okay? What kind of world are we going to grow up in? This is a moment that the body of Christ needs to rise up and be on the forefront of this justice movement. This is the thing. We're going we're gonna to love people well. This is not about, we, we don't wrestle flesh and blood. We wrestle principalities and powers. This isn't about this people against this people. This is about a principality, right? That is trying to establish itself. And do we as the church allow it? Or do we step up and rise up in this season? I'm telling you something. I want to rise up and I want to be one of the ones that are, that are prophesying in the justice. I want to be the ones that disciples nations well. I want to be one of those ones that doesn't shy away from my responsibility to stand up for kingdom and godly values in a moment and an hour like this. You know, just on Sunday, um, I picked up Charlotte from, from Sunday school, kids church, and she just looked all teary. And I thought something had gone, oh, are you okay? And uh, she looked at me and she said, Dad, I had an amazing Holy Spirit encounter, you know. And I love those moments that our kids have these moments, you know, with the Lord. But this was like a marking moment of her life at Sunday school, you know. And she was just shook up and like on cloud nine. You should see them smile on her face, you know. And um, she, I said, what happened? She said, I could barely get off the ground. I was crying and laughing and God was speaking to me. And um, it, it was, she just, I just feel electricity coming through my body. And, and I, I, was, I was shaky. God was speaking to me. God, uh, Dad, and I, I just... It just absolutely just, I loved it, God. And I want, I want my cousins to know what this feels like. I want other people to feel it. And you know what? Something in me in that moment, I felt so, I felt so happy. Like, honestly, as a dad, like you just, you just love those moments. But there was something more that said to me, that was said in my spirit, like, what happens if a whole generation misses out on their encounter because we've just allowed our values to slip out the door? We've allowed... We're just passively letting the enemy rob and take away the things that are our birthright. Well, I want to say it over you and over your city and over your nation. Watch for the writing on the wall. Stand with me. Pray with me and watch what God's going to do. Think We're going to see giants fall in this next six months, people. Stay standing. Love you all. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me here in my rambling. Love you all. Bye.